He may take you out of your comfort zone. What are you going to do? I love the way he said, as he was with Moses, so will he be with Joshua. We have to adopt that promise, you guys. We have to remember that any place God leads us, he's already been there. He already knows the terrain. He knows the pitfalls. He knows the dangerous spots. He knows the safe havens. He knows the best passageways to go. He knows where the water is in full supply. He knows where the water is not in full supply. He knows where the greenery and the grass and the plant life is rich. He knows where it's dry and barren. So what we have to remember is God, even though we may not have gone down this road before, God has. God knows this place backwards and forwards, inside out present, past, and future. And no matter what is coming down the pike, God is very, very well prepared. It will never catch him off guard. It will never hit him on his blind side because he has no blind side. He's all knowing. It will never catch him by surprise. So whatever is going on, whatever hiccups happen in your relationships, whatever hiccups happen around your plans, whatever throws you off your beaten path or throws you off balance, no matter what, God is totally, totally in control and totally capable of keeping you steady on your feet so that you're not tossed to the left or to the right, so that you're not knocked down on your face. God knows how to hold you up, gird you up, strengthen you on the inner man, equip you for the battles that are ahead, and strengthen you to endure until you get through it and on the other side of it. He knows how to handle you. He knows how to handle all of your problems, all of your challenges. God is not blind. He's not deaf. He's not cuckoo. He's not scratching his head and picking his nose trying to figure out, what do I do? What do I do? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do I do? Oh, no. No, that's not God. That's us. But that's not God. So... What I ask you to do is learn to wait on the Lord. God works according to schedule, which if you want to know how we know he works according to schedule, his schedule is the fullness of time. And when he says it's time to do this, it's time to do that, it's time to go here, it's time to go there. You got to keep your ears peeled to his bosom so you can hear him whenever he speaks. Because there may be times when God's about to bring a change in your life. And you better be ready to go with it. You ever uh, watch the basketball players when they're playing uh in a tournament, whether it's in school or on TV or wherever. And you notice the coaches are standing on the sidelines and they're calling out, do this play, do that play. They're, they're, they're throwing out quick advice on the run. And then uh, you'll hear them do a, a timeout. They'll hold their hand up, uh, you know, with one hand over the other. One hand is perpendicular to the other hand. And they're holding, and that means timeout. Now, when they call timeout, that means everybody's got to stop. The game is, a, is in a pause. You hit the pause button. Now everybody has to pay attention. Now they're waiting to see what the next move is going to be based on the coach's wisdom and strategy. And the coach may call out a player and say, okay, now you come and you sit on the bench and we're going to replace you with so-and-so. Now so-and-so comes running in. 
They're fresh. They're not winded. They're not tired. And they're going to take off where the first one left off. And now the game, the whistle is blown and the game continues. Now, what we don't realize is there are times when God calls a halt. And we don't know why there's a halt. But God knows the strategy. God knows what he's doing. And you have to understand that there may come times coming down the pike right now with this government, with the things that are getting ready to happen. God may call a halt to some stuff that will catch everybody by surprise. And when he calls time, everything's going to stop. And when everything stops, we are not to panic. The game is not over. Mm, I'm catching this on the fly. The game is not over because God called time out. He hit the pause button. Everything freezes until he says, continue with the next play. And it's according to his schedule. See, we look at life based on the best laid plans of mice and men. The best laid plans of Congress and the Senate. The best laid plans of the vice president and the president. The best laid plans of this organization and that association. But we have to look to the hand of God. Because he's the one that's really in charge. And when he blows that whistle, everything comes to a screeching halt. You cannot make the next play. You cannot make the next move until God tells you what to do. Because the only way you're going to win going through this time of loss is by listening to and by obeying him. He may tell you to do something you don't want to do. He may take you out of your comfort zone and plant you in a place you don't like. You don't like the idea of. But if you obey, you will be in a very good strategic position to not suffer loss, to not experience harm, to not have any pitfalls. Only if you obey him in spite of your own understanding of things. So we have to learn to listen and obey. We have to learn to wait, watch, and listen. Do you hear what I'm saying? You have to really keep your ears peeled to your father's voice of instruction. Because right in through here, is going to get strategic. Do you have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches? Do you have an ear to hear? Are you interested? Are you going after him? Or are you on the sidelines playing tiddlywinks with your cell phone, play, doing selfies, worshiping yourself, taking pictures of you, sending him to all your entourage? What are you doing with the time you have while you're on the sidelines waiting for your next coach's move? What are you doing? How are you equipping yourself and preparing yourself? What are you doing? Sitting on your do nothing, waiting on God to do something so he can tell you what to do next. What are you doing? So now, okay, now that we've got that straight, think about sports, you guys. Think about sports. There are some times when he'll have you play a position. It may not be your favorite play. It may not be the thing you really want to do. But if you want the team to win, you're going to have to do your part. You're going to have to play that position. Mm -hmm. You ever watch uh, Angels in the Outfield? You ever watch any of these games? where a person is put in a position they normally don't play. It, it's fascinating 
to watch. I love sports, but I'm not a worshiper of sports. I love racquetball, pool, swimming, competitive swimming. I love diving. I mean, I love watching. I ain't no, I'll jump off the diving board, but I ain't diving. But the bottom line is I love watching these plays and how they call the shots and why they call the shots and why they choose this move over that move. And the the mind that goes ahead of that is really fascinating. And if men can fascinate you, imagine how much more God can fascinate you. Listen, his ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. There's no searching him out. So if God says, get yourself a place, you better get yourself a place. If God says, I want you alone with me, you better get alone with him. If God says, I want you to quit this job, you better quit the job. But if God says, I know they're mistreating you, but I don't want you to quit. I need you there. I need you there. The reason they're mistreating you is because you've got the demons in torment because my presence is there with you. So you have to have an ear to hear whether God's saying go or stay. Get your own place or stay with this one, that one, or the other one. Stay with this job no matter what or quit the job no matter what. You have to stick with God's strategies. See, we think we know what to do, but we really don't. Only God knows what's coming in the very next minute, the very next hour, the very next week, month, or year. Only he knows all of that. So if you want to listen to advice, baby cakes, you better start consulting with the Lord, not wizards that peep and mutter and mediums and witches and warlocks and, and, and psychic hotlines. No, that's not what you consult with. You consult with God Almighty. He knows how to get you to the promised land, but he is the only one who knows how to do so. And if you're listening to everyone else and trying to find shortcuts, baby, you might turn a 13-day journey into a 40-day ordeal. That's up to you. Come hard or come easy. Come easy or come hard. That's up to you. Your choice. Gain the balls in your court. All right. Now, the thing I want you to understand is how God deals with us. God knows there are times when we have fear and trepidation. He knows it. But we have to decide what do we trust the most? The things our fears are based on or God's word and his promises? What do we choose to trust the most? Some of you are going to be Move to do things that you never felt led to do before. Some of you are going to be put on hold and you're going to feel like you're in a holding pattern. Your God may go in in circles. Did it, did it, do. Going round and round I go. And you're like, Lord, how long, when, where, what, and how? You better be asking every question you can. Because God knows how to get you to your blessing through the obstacle. You don't have to go around the obstacle, over the obstacle, under the obstacle. You don't have to wait for the obstacle to blow away. No, God knows how to take you through the obstacle that's facing you. These people could never have passed over Jordan in the natural. The banks were too full. The water was too high. But what did God do? He told them, put your feet in the water. And once they put their feet in the water, what did the waters do? The waters got out of God's way. 
because the waters know who God is, even if you don't. The waters, nature, the forces of nature, they know who God is, even if you have no clue. Even if you're inundated with doubts, the water is not. The water did what? It obeyed God immediately and stood up and moved out of the people's way so the people can cross over on, on dry ground. No matter what gets in your way in these last days, no matter what obstacles the government puts up in front of you, no matter what stumbling blocks the enemy tries to put between you and your blessing, trust God to get you to your blessing. Trust him. He'll get you there. Don't let any monkey stop your show. Don't let anything discourage you, deter you, uh, derail you. Don't let anything hinder you because God is able to get you from point A to point B, right smack dab in the middle of your blessing. He will make a way where there is no way. If he can make rivers in the desert, baby, and he can cross you on dry ground where water once stood so high that you can't even get across, God can do whatever you need him to do. My question to you is, will you choose to believe? And if you're having difficulty, ask God to even give you the ability to believe him at his word, to give you the courage to act on his word and give you the balls to take the first step. That's what you've got to do. Because we will find all kind of reasons to maintain the status quo. Well, yeah. And if God ain't in your status quo, baby, you are alone. He's on the other side with his people and you still sitting there on the banks talking about, well, I got to maintain my status quo. I got to be cool. I can't make any rash decisions now. Following God is not a rash decision. God will not take you where he cannot keep you. Remember that. Remember that. All right. That's the main thing, I think, to the message. God will not take you or lead you into a place that he cannot keep you. With God, all things are possible. He can always keep you. My question to you is, will you allow him to take you? That's what I want to ask you. Will you sit your little happy hips down and ask the Lord, what should I do next? And then when he holds up the traffic signal, you bust that move, baby. And you do what you've got to do. And grow up. Because some of what we don't do is because we don't really want to grow up. You see, when you get blessings from God, thank you, Lord. When you get blessings from God, Responsibility comes with the blessing. What did he tell Adam when he laid the garden out before him? What did he say? I want you to till the ground. That meant he gave him responsibility to go with the blessing. Did he not? Hmm. Whatever blessing God has for you, remember there will be responsibility to go with it. 
when I opened up my first hair salon based on God's instruction and timing, now all of a sudden I realized I've got to keep this up and I've got to keep that up and I've got to keep the towels coming in and I've got to supply drinking water. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. Blessing with added responsibility. That's what happens. And some of you, you want the blessing, but you don't want the responsibility. And with some responsibilities, there are inconveniences, interruptions, <laughs> inconveniences, and at times added costs. Yeah, I had a beautiful location. People were coming in in the droves. I mean, I, I never saw so much growth in clientele. But what was the cost? $2,300 lease every month, a 200 and some odd dollar light bill every month, business insurance every month, water service, towel service, responsibility came with that blessing. The reason, see, this is, this is where we know where we are emotionally, psychologically, emo spiritually. We want the blessings of God. We want the candy. We want the cake. We want the cookies and the ice cream. Don't forget the chips and the dip. But we don't want to have to get in our pocket, go drive to the store and go buy that stuff. Now, God may not give you the ice cream the cookies, the candy, the chips, the dip. But he may send the money to you and it's up to you to go get that stuff. Now, if you don't want to go get it, it ain't going to happen. God blesses in many ways. And there are times when you get your blessing and you don't really want the blessing. The opportunity is there. The door is open. The waters are parted. But you don't want to go through what you know you're going to have to go through when you get on the other side. Because you know that to whom much is given, much is required. So you rather be given little so that little will be required of you. Because you're lazy, you're lonely, you're tired, you don't want to be bothered. You don't want the added responsibility, so you sabotage your blessings so that you have a legitimate excuse to blame God for not blessing you the way that you've been praying. We don't realize the psychological games we play with ourselves and with the Lord. God knows it. He knows the reason even if you still don't. It doesn't mean you're backsliding. It means you're scared. And you've got, to, it's up to you to continue to ask God to remove the fear. And if God doesn't remove the fear, that means he wants you to take that step and walk into the banks where the water is still there. You got to take this first step before he'll remove the fear. That's called stepping out on faith. Are you willing to put your hand in the hand of the man who stills the water? Are you willing to put your hand in the hand of the man who calms the sea? Hmm. Are you willing? Wow. So don't be surprised if God gives you new marching orders. Have an ear to hear. Have a heart to obey. And then have the balls to step into it, baby. Step in the banks. The waters will not part this time until you make the first move. Mm-hmm. And that is you 
stepping out, stepping out on faith. Step into the water and watch what God does. Bust that move and watch what God opens up before you. He's a, he already knows what's there. It's waiting for you. What are you waiting for? I'm done. Amen. Amen.